Who aren't just fascinated by infinity? It is so incomprehensible that everyone wants to know about it. What's infinity? <laughs> um, which kind of infinity? There's multiple different kinds of infinities. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, there's countable infinity and there's uncountable infinities. What? <laughs> Well, actually, you're talking to the wrong person, fundamentally. You shouldn't really be talking to scientists at all. If you want to know about infinity, you need to talk to mathematicians because they're really the people who deal with infinities. They're the people who understand the properties of infinity and so on. In science, there are no infinities. There are things which are extremely big and there are things which are extremely small, um, which is just one over a very big number, but there is nothing which is infinite or there is nothing which is infinitesimal, very, very, very tiny. The universe could well be infinite in extent, but actually what we can observe of the universe, what we can see of the universe, because light only travels at a finite speed and the universe only has a finite age, is finite. And so it could well be that the universe is infinite, but because it's not directly observable in that sense, um, it's not, from a physicist's point of view, terribly meaningful to even worry about that infinity. Yeah, so infinity. Well, the easiest way is, you know, to get infinity is to take any uh, finite number, like three, for example, and divide it by zero and you can see immediately now there we have a problem what value does that have well if we divide any real any finite number by zero we'll get get this infinity and that's the symbol it, it sort of has that elegance to it that sort of i mean it, it just looks kind of infinite I think maybe it's just because i associate the symbol with the concept but actually there's just something about that sort of figure of eight structure that looks kind of uh, i mean you know you can go round and round it forever but i think it was introduced the symbol infinity was introduced uh, by a British ma mathematician called Wallace in the, uh, in the 17th century, and apparently he, he was one of the first people to use this. The, I, I, an alternative one, which I think is very funny, on the um, Egyptian hieroglyphs, you find, you find the symbol, I think it's for a thousand, and uh, I, I'll draw a cartoon version of it, but it's, it's something like this, apparently. So, whether this chap here is clearly a symbol of a man and whether he's indicating that this is a, a very large size or he's putting his hands up like this and saying, oh, that's a very, a very large number, I don't know. But maybe a symbol like that would be, would be a better symbol for infinity. Where infinities do appear, it usually means you've done something wrong. So, for example, my colleagues in particle physics spend a lot of time trying to calculate the masses of particles. Kind of, they come up with some theory of particle physics and use that theory to calculate the mass of a particle very often they end up with infinite masses for the mass of the proton or the mass of the electron or some other particle and clearly we know those particles are not infinite in mass and so actually usually an infinity appearing in your calculations means that your theory is wrong. Physicists on the whole don't like infinities when they crop up in physical theories uh, we, we're dealing what we, with what we call singularities and a lot of uh, celebrated physicists have spent a lot of time removing uh, singularities and infinities from problems in physics, like, like for example, uh, Feynman. Infinity uh, was an obsession for mathematicians, and one of the famous mathematicians who dealt with this problem of how do you deal with, with, with a number like infinity was David Hilbert. And he came up uh, with uh, the idea of hotel infinity, which I'll tell you about. There's a story about a hotel. So imagine that you have a hotel with an infinite number of rooms. And because it's so popular, it's always completely filled with an infinite number of guests. However, it's possible if you or I want to check in there, uh, the manager is very accommodating, and after a bit of time, he can always find you a room. So the idea goes like this. You check into the hotel, and you ask the, you ask the, the, the people at the desk, can you put me in? And they say, yes, yes. What we'll do is uh, we'll move the first guest into the second room, the second into the third, the third into the fourth, the fourth into the fifth, sixth into the seventh, the seventh into the eighth, eighth into ninth, blah, 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 and so on. And by moving this these succession of people, because you've got an infinite number of rooms, they go on forever. You can always move uh, a, the, the guest in a very large number of rooms to the next one and so on to infinity. So you get accommodated and you're very, very happy. Okay. So then if you're interested in mathematics, you can now uh, see, well, let's see how good this hotel really is. I'm now going to bring an infinite number of my friends along. And you go along to the front desk again and say, look, I know you're very busy. I, you're a big hotel, but I guess you're completely full up again. And they say, yes, sir, we are. Um, but can you accommodate my guests? How many are there? They're an infinite number. No problem, they say. You can imagine that you could take each one of your guests already in the hotel 
And if they're in room one, you ask them to move to room two. If they're in room two, you ask them to move to room four. The person in room three goes into room six. The person in room four, now we get rid of and put him into room eight. Room 11 goes into 22, and person in room 12 goes to 24. So now all my odd number rooms are vacated because I pushed all these people off to infinity. And I can come in now with my infinite number of guests and they're happily accommodated into the infinite number of odd numbers. So I think I've stayed in that hotel before. <laughs> it's in London, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very small rooms. Yeah. It seems to be pretty trivial. I expect most of the people watching this video will think it's trivial as well. But apparently, uh, this is still set as a, as, a, as a little problem for people at university maths departments and probably still at school to think about, to make them think about. Uh, sets and so on, all these fancy things that mathematicians do. But it does seem a fairly silly, trivial problem, really. We don't like dealing with that in physics. Mathematicians love it. In physics, we say, let's chop it off here. Let's, let's pretend that liquid is a continuous fluid, but when you get down to the atomic level, it's made up of atoms, which are 10 to the minus whatever, 10 to the minus 10 metres in size. Again, there's a funny difference between mathematicians and physicists here. Mathematicians worry hugely about the infinitesimal and the infinite and so on. Physicists tend to kind of throw infinities around in a much more sort of slapdash kind of fashion. So when a physicist tells you something is infinite or when in a calculation something comes out as infinite, it really just means it's very, very big. But that would, you know, have a mathematician tearing his hair out because actually very, very big is as far from infinity as you can get. So we always try and make sure everything is finite range so that we can deal with it. And sometimes you have to do the maths assuming that there is a finite range, otherwise you get nonsense. So you, do you cheat? You put it in the too hard basket? Uh, that's one way of putting it. You, another way is saying sweeping down to the carpet so you don't see it. And it's generally thought to be a swizz that works because we live in a world without infinities. So my son's six, and uh, yes, this is the kind of question he likes asking, well, what if it's bigger than that, what if it's bigger than that, and so on, and you know, you get into the game of, well, I, uh, you know, I'll pay you ten pounds, I'll pay you a hundred pounds, I'll pay you infinity pounds, and he likes, you know, having that as his trump card, so he clearly has some concept of it already.